Chapter one, lesson five for advanced math. This is going to be a quick one today. We are going to be graphing um, ratio tables. So basically they're gonna give us some basic information, a basic ratio. We're gonna fill it into a table. Um, we're gonna have our X and our Y, <clears throat> and then we are going to just graph them on our graph, making simple line graphs. And then at the very end, you just, um, they'll ask you to make like a simple observation about it. So you might be, you know, Joe's line is climbing at a steeper rate than Molly's, or Molly's is climbing at a shallower rate than, I don't remember the other name I used. All right, to begin, here we have our two ratio tables for Marcus and David. They gave us a scenario. Um, we're gonna fill in this and get our X and Y's. You can see here that they've already determined that our X will be the weeks. And then the Y's is gonna be the amount of money that they save each week. So let me read this to you. Two friends are each saving money in their bank accounts. Marcus saves 10 bucks each week, while David saves 15 each week. <clears throat> so right off the bat, you can see that David is saving more money than Marcus. So just a kind of, you know, something to think about before we even get into this. Since Davis is saving more, or David is saving more per week, we should expect his line to be steeper than Marcus's because Marcus's um, the amount of money he's saving is gonna grow at a lesser rate. So let's make sure our graph reflects that when we get to there. All right, so let's make a table for each friend that shows the total amount saved for one, two, three, and four weeks. List the information as ordered pairs. Weeks is our X. And total dollar saved is going to be our Y. Um, if you're not familiar with X and Y, I'll talk a little bit more about that when we start looking at the graph. But let's get the table filled in first. Don't fall over there. Okay. All right, so remember, Marcus, he saves 10 bucks every week. So after one week, he would have saved $10. After two, 20. After three, 30. And after four, 40. So then if we were gonna do this in our coordinates, it would be one, 10, two, 20, 3, 30, and 4 is paired with 40. And these are your X and your Y. Let's do the same thing for David. <clears throat> so for David, he's saving, let's remember, David's a $15 a week saver. He must be wanting a new bike or something. So after week one, he'll have 15. After week two, he'll have 30. After week three, 45. And then finally, he will have 60. You can see it's climbing by 15 with each consecutive week. So in one week, being my X value, he'll have $15 being my Y. After two weeks, he'll have 30. After three weeks, he'll have 45. Sorry, it's a really tiny box for me to try to write in. So hopefully you can read that all right. All right, let's move down. Now let's take the information above that we just filled out and we're going to put it into our graph. Now you'll notice I have two different colored pens. You may wanna have two different colored um, items to write with or things to write with, just so that we can tell who is who, but it's not always necessary by any means. All right, so I said I'd talk about the X and the Y. So what this really looks like, if we, you've probably heard of the quadrants before. This is the X, the X is always the run and the Y is always the vertical. So X is horizontal, like the horizon when you look out to see the sun rise or set. And then Y is our vertical. And some teachers will say, oh, you always gotta run before you jump. And that helps you kind of remember that you always have to do the X movement or X value before you do the Y value. So if I were gonna put <clears throat> one 10 on here, I would come over one, because that's the X, and then up 10, because that's the Y. Also, you notice that we're only seeing this section here because that's all we need we're only dealing with positive values the weeks are all positive and the amount of money is only going up and is positive um, later on we'll start getting it like like fifth grade only deals really with this but when we get into it with advanced math you're going to be dealing with all four quadrants this is a positive positive this one is positive and then you see you go down so this is a positive negative i'm giving you more information than you need right now and then going back or to the left is negative, but going up is positive. So this is negative positive. And then this final one down here, this is going left is negative and down is negative. So this would be known as negative negative. If that just made your head hurt, don't worry too much about it. Just make sure you understand how to take this information and put it here. 
I'm gonna start with Marcus, and since I have a green pen in my hand, I'm gonna make Marcus the green. And you'll see it says, first is 110, so I'm going over one and up 10, then it's 220, so go over two and up 20. Notice I'm always coming from zero here and moving. So I'm not going, oh, now I gotta go two and moving two from here, no. You're always going back to this zero spot. The coordinates here are zero, zero. It's otherwise known as the origin because it's where everything originates and starts. So now I need to go 330. So go back to your origin, go over three, and then up to 30. And then I'm gonna do my 440. So back here, over four, up 40. Okay. All right, so that takes care of Marcus. The only thing you missed is I just connected the dots so you could see the line. Now we're gonna take care of David. Now remember, David's saving more per week. So we should expect this to go at a steeper rate. Also, you'll notice there isn't like 15 and 45 on here. So we're gonna ha have to kind of guesstimate or estimate where that would land. First off, it's 115. So we're gonna run one and we're gonna go up to 15, which 15 we can assume is right here, halfway between 10 and 20. And then it's 130, I'm sorry, it's 230. So run two, up 30. And then it's 345. So I'm gonna run three and then jump up to 45, which is right here between 40 and 50. And then finally, it's gonna be 460. So run four and jump to 60. And now I'll connect those dots the best I can with this tripod in my way. And as we had earlier discussed and predicted, you can see that David's line is climbing at a steeper rate, and that's because he's saving $5 more per week compared with Marcus. So when you move down to this last step, it says, how do the ratios of Marcus and Marcus's savings and David's savings compare? <clears throat> it's gonna get a little repetitive, um, but one thing you can say is, well, both of their um, lines are straight, and the reason they're both straight is because, remember, it always increased by the same amount each time. Marcus's always goes up by 10, and David's always goes up by 15. That's why they have a straight line. And since it's a straight line, that means we could predict things way out here into the future of where they would be and how much money they would have. Um, so that's one comment you could make is they both have straight lines. Then you'd probably want to make a second comment. Just you could say, um, you know, what's his name? David. You know, David's line is steeper than Marcus's line because David is saving more money per week than Marcus is. That would be a fine comparison for you to say, and then you would be done with it. Like I said, it's kind of a shorty, but this ran a little long, but short lesson, you should be just fine, I bet, when you get to going on this. Just remember, X is the run, Y is the jump, it always goes X, Y, and if this was too much, it's coming later. Asta.